Hello, let's talk about books. Uh, I realise that for a while here I haven't done any sort of introduction, I've just assumed we're talking about books and not about me, but they are also my opinions about books. So hello, my name is Elizabeth and I like to give my opinions, my waffly opinions, about the books that I have been reading. If you haven't been here before, what I do is I break down my reading for the year into five book chunks because that makes the videos a bit more manageable and a bit more regular rather than, you know, say a monthly video with one book and then the next month with 17 books or ridiculousness like that. So it's just five book chunks. Now, if you're not into YouTube, you just want to know like the TLDR, <laughs> Like, the point of the substack is so you don't have to sit through a YouTube waffle, and yet I waffle to get to the point. There is a substack link below if you just want to read two minute snippets of what this video will probably be 15 minutes. That's gone really well, excellent. <laughs> Very smooth. What else? Oh, we need books <clears throat> in order to talk about books. We need coffee in order to talk about books. I definitely need this today. And also, I just wanted to mention my Amazon wishlist. I do normally awkwardly add this in at the end, but I do have an Amazon wishlist that's got all the things that is on my radar. And most of the books that I'm talking about today have come from you guys who have purchased these books off my wishlist. And as Charlie Post brought them to my house and I was so excited. I cannot even begin to tell you. So exciting to get unexpected book mail. I mean, book mail is great, but unexpected book mail. It just chef kiss. Thank you to everyone who has bought something off that list. It just it brings me so much joy. And of course, if something arrives unexpectedly, it goes straight to the top of the tibia because I'm just I'm too excited. I can't help myself. All right, now let's talk about them. The first one was actually read from one of my book clubs, and it is Ursula K. Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness, which was published in 1969. Uh, it's a classic, an absolute classic. It's about a human who serves as, as the first contact ambassador to a planet called Gethen. And so of course he's alien to this world, but he's alien in lots of, lots of cultural and physical ways. Because he's alien, he doesn't understand all the nuance and all the context of the politics, which is a lot of this book. He, the, the humans on this planet are asexual and they go through a monthly cycle as part of your hormonal cycle they develop male or female biological sex characteristics and that's their mating season is just that couple of days of their hormonal cycle and then they go back to asexual beings and so there's a famous line from this book the king is pregnant and because there's no gender of any of these people on the planet and it's for that reason, a foundational feminist work from 1969. Uh, these days I was like, yeah, and? <laughs> and I, after I read the book, I read the introductory essays. One of them from China Mievel, who's said straight up, it's hard to remember how impactful these books were when you read them 40, 50 years after publication. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. And thinking back on it, having been reminded of that fact, I'm like, yeah, actually, I can see how this is really impactful. I think if it was published today, all the characters would be them, their pronouns rather than he, him pronouns. Uh, they're characterized masculine or feminine based on their body shape and their role. Uh, like housekeepers are often, um, everybody lives in like a boarding house situation. And so people who run them are often characterized as feminine. The people in politics who Genley spends a lot of time with are categorized as masculine. All of that to say, Genley gets himself into massive political trouble, gets himself having to flee to different countries, put in prison. Through all this, developing a friendship, a very close friendship with one of the political figures. And all the time, it's only in retrospect that Kenley appreciates the friendship that he has gained and the nuance of the friendship because he's a cultural alien. He doesn't understand the work that's been put into him and the gift that's been given to him. And I think I could do the book better justice if I did some more reading around the impact, the, like the cultural impact of the book. Because as a book, it was fine. 
is fine. The main blurb and the cover reflect something that happens in the last third of the book, which is the thing that annoys me. As an exploration of gender and gender roles, I don't think it's as impactful to me as it, it could have been if I could better understand its cultural context. I gave it three stars and I hope that was cogent. <laughs> Who can say? Who can say till I edit this thing if it's any good? Next is a book that came from my Amazon wish list from my greatest fan ever, and that is my mother. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> and that is The Echo of Old Books by Barbara Davis. It was published in 2023. Oh, it's a heavy book. Uh, and I did not finish it. I hated it. I hated it a lot. <laughs> and I'll tell you for why. It is the story of a woman who is a bookseller, and she has the ability to touch books and feel the emotion of the people who have previously owned and read and handled the books. And so she finds a manuscript, uh, well, it's a published book, but there's like, she can't find any info about it. It's a one-off. And she starts reading it because it's full of emotion. She starts reading it and it, it is a story that starts out, it's clearly written from the author to one recipient and it's retelling their love story how they met and their relationship as it progressed and i was so angry at it because why why do you need to write in the first person why do you need to write this reflective story of your love story to the other person in that relationship i was ah that really annoyed me but it's, it's not just the story of the woman who's reading this book it's called Forgotten Belle it is the story of the woman who receives this book and it is the story of the bloke writing this book there's like three three interconnecting stories in here the actual love story for getting Belle it's tedious and cringe romance that it doesn't have any flowing narrative and that would make sense if you were an amateur writer writing this one book about your history but it's, t it's tedious to read oh, I wrote down an example of my notes you blink at me startled by my bluntness or at least pretending to be you're the kind who judges on superficialities rather than bothering to learn what might lie beneath. It's like cringe exposition all the way. I couldn't do it. Oh, I forgot. Like I read this so long ago and, and ditched it straight away. Uh, the tale of the bookseller is a bit um, really as well. She's an orphan. Uh, her mum dies of cancer when she's a young adult and then her dad commits suicide as she, while she's a teenager. Her adoptive mum unexpectedly dies of an aneurysm <laughs> I've written how far are we supposed to suspend our disbelief <laughs> you know me in romance so anyway this went on my wish list because the, the title is cool and the cover is cool and I'm sorry that I didn't like it but I spoke to my mum I asked her if she'd like it she said lol no thanks so if you would like this book I will send it to you if you send an email to books at elizabethmorgan.net which I'm going to put in the description below the first person to send me an email by the 18th of July I will send you this book and you can tell me if it's actually any good suspend your disbelief a bit better than I did I fared better with this next one which came from Luke off my Amazon wish list thank you Luke this is I didn't look up how to pronounce this I'm so sorry uh, Olga oh it's Polish can I just put that there? Can you read that and put it on the screen? Uh, drive your plow over the bones of the dead. Uh, this is translated by Antonia Lloyd Jones in 2019. And I don't know how this came to be on my Amazon wish list. I think I saw a booktuber talk about it and explain it in a way that sounded really up my alley. And then when I got it, it was it's a strange book and I really like it. Luke, put it higher up on your TBR because it is really good. It is the story of a lady in her, I want to say her 60s. She's close to retirement. She lives in, in like a remote village where people go for holidays. And she stays there year round. She's a part-time school teacher. 
and the story opens with her neighbor having died she lives in a com like the community is only three full-time residents and the rest is all holiday homes one of her neighbors dies and from there she starts telling just the tale of what's happening because after after he dies more deaths start happening and they seem to be linked and so she's she's convinced that the animals are doing it because the people who die they all have a connection with hunting and she's just she's a great little bit eccentric not quite there anymore woman who's heavily into astrology she never calls anybody by their name she calls them by a label that's more appropriate to them than their name and in against the backdrop of of her is these murders and life in the village and life in the town nearby and a little bit of her backstory and it's all very very dark and very good and I want to read you this quote that's just like epitomizes the storytelling actually there was there was two quotes I really liked the first one is in the introductory part chapter two she's been invited into her neighbor's home for the first time she says everything in here was warm and bright warm and cozy what a joy it is in life when you happen to have a clean warm kitchen it has never happened to me <laughs> i felt that in my bones <laughs> and the second one which made me laugh so much so in spring the dentist starts up his practice again because he can only work outside in the sunlight because his eyes are failing and so she goes to the dentist and everybody's sitting around waiting their turn in the chair. So the dentist calls next and one of the group of onlookers, like they're all just sitting around watching people in the dentist chair. One of the group of onlookers stepped forward and reluctantly sat in the chair. What's up? said the dentist. In reply, the man opened his mouth and the dentist peeked into it. He instantly recoiled saying, what the fuck? Which must have been the shortest possible assessment of the state of the patient's dentition. I loved it. This got a four stars from me and it's just it's just uh, one of those characters. It's not really a plot book. It's character book and that's my vibes. So highly, highly enjoyed it. Apparently this author won the, what does it say? Battery rudely cut out. Um, I was saying uh, she won the Man Booker International Prize in 2018 for her book Flights, which I insta bought and it is on my to read list. Next up was a reread for me and that is Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. My science fiction book club picked this up for May I think but I had already read this uh, in 2020 I think. This was published in 2015 and I loved it so much the first time. I was actually a little hesitant to see whether I would like it the second time around. Luckily I did. <laughs> Luckily. Not as much though I think stuff that i read in 2020 because it was a time um i think just hit a bit different books just hit different every time you read them anyway uh, so this is two concurrent timelines where it starts out with humans who are using uh, nanotechnology to terraform a planet and then to um, they've created a virus to accelerate the evolution in a particular direction of monkeys this happens over millennia and then at the same time you get the remnants of the human population from earth earth has finally died and they're out on colony ships looking for somewhere to settle and rebuild the human civilization so they come to this terraformed planet on they're not sure if it was terraformed or if it's just in the records because uh, it's been thousands of years records from that time like records of our history from 2000 years ago they're a bit sketchy and open to interpretation so the humans come to this planet to check out if it's terraformed and they run into some resistance and there are no spoilers from there but it ultimately culminates in the humans and the spiders coming together no spoilers and it's it's a fantastic exploration of uh what would happen if rather than going straight to conflict, humans went straight to cooperation, which is what the virus is intended to do and how it gets the spiders, who are mostly solitary, into civilization in the first place. Spider civilization goes through a lot of parallels with our own, like the development of religion and the development of science and then the conflict of religion and science. 
and it's just it was excellent I really liked it I really liked it the second time too and of course all three in this series I've reviewed the other two that follow this one I think I reviewed them last year children of ruin and children of memory I'll link those below all three of the books explore the nature of what it is to be human and what it is to be which is what good science fiction does highly recommend oh my coffee's cold <laughs> I gave it three and a half stars on this read. I think I gave it four the first time. It's it's really great. Next up is Nigel Warburton's A Little History of Philosophy. This was also gifted off my Amazon wishlist from Luke. Thank you, Luke. We are both Pisces and we're celebrating Pisces season. Uh, this was published in 2011 and it is... Now I've got to put down my copy. Each chapter is a brief, brief couple of pages overview of different Western tradition philosophers. So it starts out with Socrates and Plato, goes through Aristotle, Augustine, uh, Descartes, uh, Charles Darwin, Kierkegaard, Marx, and finishes with Peter Singer. Uh, there's 40 chapters in all. And it's just a little brief overview of that person and their contribution to philosophy, their main argument. The chapters are very short, the sentences are very short, and that annoyed me because it reads like a breathless YA, move, 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 uh, when it's really just imparting information about philosophers. So I felt that was jarring to me, but absolutely readable. Some of the language is a little transphobic. I will give that warning in that literally any other example could be used except for gender you know to explain a point and they went for gender this book is 12 years old so i can forgive it a little but i didn't like it otherwise if you want a brief overview of western philosophical tradition and the contributors to it this is perfectly cromulent and i gave it three stars and finally for this video is Richard Osman's The Man Who Died Twice. This is the second in the Thursday Murder Club series. And in this one, we have our friends from the retirement village solving a murder, would you believe? Let me read the blurb for you because otherwise there will be spoilers. Um, Elizabeth, who in the first book, Elizabeth is like the ringleader of the Thursday Murder Club. And also she was clearly a part of MI5 or MI6. Uh, because she keeps talking about breaching the Official Secrets Act in the first book. Anyway, Elizabeth has received a letter from an old colleague, a man with whom she has a long history. He needs her help. His story involves stolen diamonds, a violent mobster, and a very real threat to his life. As the bodies start piling up, Elizabeth enlists Joyce, Ibrahim, and Ron, the members of the Thursday Murder Club, in the hunt for a ruthless murderer. And if they find the diamonds too, well, wouldn't that be a bonus? Uh, so there's a bit of a heist situation, some murders to solve, and a mystery. It's so much fun. The best part though is Joyce, uh, who does a lot of the POV narration. She's writing a diary about what's happening. She sets up an Instagram account and she names herself Great Joy 69 and then she starts getting all these messages on Instagram she doesn't know how to access and by the end of the book she enlists her daughter's help to access all these Instagram messages to this account and her daughter advises her maybe she'd want to change her Instagram handle if she doesn't want to get all these um, unsolicited photos of men's genitalia and she thinks no I'm gonna keep it <laughs> Very cute, very sweet, um, of course, a murder mystery and a lot of fun. I will read the third one. So that is it for this video. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you everybody who sent something off that Amazon wish list. Uh, Substack link is below. If you made it this far, thank you. <laughs> it is really a TLDR version of what is happening in this video. And I will see you next time. Oh, and subscribe if you like. <laughs> I'm going to finish my cuppa, which is now cold. And I will see you next time. Bye.